What is the single most important invention of our times? There are several contenders, but none to my mind could challenge this one. We are in the late 1980s. This is CERN, a research laboratory in Geneva where over the course of a year, anywhere between 15 to 16,000 scientists from over 100 countries would collaborate on cutting-edge research. Most of these scientists would visit CERN for their research for a few months every year before returning to their home countries. Upon their departure from CERN, several crucial projects would languish since sharing and exchanging vital information on these tasks was near impossible in the 1980s. You see, their computers couldn't speak to one another. Because each system had its own software, its own data format, its own language. The exchange of information was simply put, painful. Some form of reliable communication devices or tools were the need of the hour. A British scientist named Tim had been working furiously on finding a solution. And then in 1989, he presented a paper to his peers titled Information Management, a proposal, where he meticulously described a system to universally share documents using clickable links between pieces of content. His boss, following this presentation, famously reacted to Tim's idea with, it's vague, but exciting. Tim went on to perfect his first prototype. It included what he referred to as functional hypertext, URLs, HTTP, and HTML. This would, as you now know, form the web's core technology. Tim had invented the World Wide Web. By 1991, he had launched the world's first website. And then came the critical decision. What should Tim do with this potential gold mine? He was heavily advised to commercialize the technology, to outright own a piece of the action, to patent it. Had he patented it, he was told that he would likely become one of the wealthiest men in the world. But he also prophetically realized that in doing so, the web would likely become fragmented. It could stifle its growth, creating barriers to its entry. It might limit the number of potential users, possibly making it expensive to access. And it would most certainly fall into the hands of greedy corporations. Tim saw something much larger. He envisioned a universally accessible platform that would empower every human. He envisioned a global connection. Students accessing notes in remote villages. Entrepreneurs in Ranchi sharing their services with those in Rio de Janeiro. Parents speaking to their children across continents, all without hindrance or restriction of any sort. Tim chose to not patent the World Wide Web. His employer CERN also wholeheartedly supported his vision. In 1993, CERN released the World Wide Web software in the public domain, free of any patents, royalties or licensing fees. The internet now belonged to the world. Tim Berners-Lee didn't ask what he could earn, but what the world would gain. Let's all take a moment to thank Sir Tim for his humility, his integrity, his unwavering ethical compass, and above all, his generosity for showing the world the code that makes a true gentleman.